What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unscripted Access, episode number 98. You're here with your host, Nick McCallis. On this week's show, we also have Anthony Ta. Hello. And Bronson Fiore. What's up? Now, you'll notice that this week's podcast has been released a little bit early. The reason why is obviously we did not have a podcast last week, and we're not going to have a podcast this coming Monday. Um, this is releasing Monday. We're not going to have a podcast this coming Wednesday. Uh, the reason why is just because of schedule conflicts. We weren't well, able these to post on Friday, so this coming Friday, you mean, we record on Wednesday. Well, right, yeah, it's not going to be posted. Yeah, thank you. We're not going to be posting on Friday. This will be releasing on Monday, which is when you'll be listening to it. Um, and the reason why is obviously last week you guys did not see a podcast, and this coming Friday you won't see a podcast just because of schedule conflicts, so we're kind of releasing one in between so you guys don't go too long without a podcast. Uh, we'll be back with the regular schedule the following Friday. Uh, but we do have – we don't have too much to talk about, but we do have a lot to talk about regarding one topic, and that's the Destiny beta. As I'm sure all of you guys are aware, the Destiny beta is now live on the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 and on the Xbox 360 and Xbox One later this week. The beta is going to be live until the 27th, so any Xbox owners, you only have a few days to play. Uh, but I know that Bronson, Anthony, and I have all been playing the Destiny beta. Bronson and I have been playing on the PlayStation 4, while Anthony have been playing on the PlayStation 3, and I'm sure we have quite a bit to say. Now, I know Bronson and I have been, that we were in the alpha, and they've added quite a few things to the new beta. And um, once again, I'm impressed. Destiny is that game that is still my most anticipated game of this year, and after playing the alpha and the beta, it still remains that way. It's so much fun. So much fun. I mean, what are your guys' initial impressions? Obviously, Anthony, this is the first time that you've been playing it. And Bronson, this is the beta versus the alpha. What are your guys' first impressions? Uh, I would say that I'm very impressed. The shooting feels good. The game is gorgeous. The music is great. I want to see more of the lore. You know, like, the story is seems really cool and interesting, but obviously, it being the beta, they're only giving us, you know, sliver. So it's just like, I want to know more. I want to know about the Fallen and the Traveler and all that stuff. So all that seems really interesting. You know, like, it, it, there's a lot of stuff where I'm just like, I, I, I want more of this. This is, this is very well made, and it definitely has serious Game of the Year potential if this is, if the, if the rest of the, the, game is as good and diverse as this little chunk has been. What about you, Anthony? Destiny. I mean, I'm playing like the wrong version of the game, but my first impressions of it is uh, I'm more of a presentation kind of person. As long as the gameplay is good enough, um, I'm more of a presentation kind of person, and Wow, you could really tell that they didn't really waste a penny when they when of that five hundred million dollars. Um, but it's very cinematic. It's per, it feels perfectly made. Uh, not in the sense that um, oh, this is going to be my perfect game, but it kind of feels like it feels like um, has that Last of Us quality where. They made it so well that you can't really find much wrong with it. And that's that's what I'm feeling out of the beta so far. Is that they made it so well that it's kind of hard to find faults. Freaking, I love the UI. It has amazing finesse. And, and I don't use the word finesse very often. But it's got some great finesse in the UI. In the presentation. The animation looks so fluent and, and believable. That... It's like watching a film, and then there's the gameplay. Feels very solid, very tight. I feel that the normal difficulty setting has the right amount of challenge to it. I uh, like how it's easy for me to look at gear and say, ah, this piece of gear will be better for me. Ah, this rifle is more of my play style. And it just... It's really good uh, so far. And even on the PlayStation 3, it actually runs. It runs well. Uh, no frame rate issues as far as I could tell. Everything looks kind of muddled, but hey, it's kind of downported to a PS3, so... Well, yeah, um, that's, what I, that's what I wanted to bring up next is 
both Bronson and I have been playing on the PlayStation 4, and on the PlayStation it's beautiful. 4, the it game is. looks great. Yeah, it looks great. I mean, it's not... I mean, I, it's not, let's say, on the level of Kills of the Shadow Fall, but it's not far below it. The game looks... I think the art... I personally like the art more than Shadow Fall, though that's always going to be personal preference, obviously. Well, yeah, art's personal preference. From, from graphical standpoint, I think Kills of the Shadow Fall has it slightly beat. Uh, but the game looks absolutely amazing. It looks really good. Um, the lighting is so good. Yeah, the so lighting good. is really good. Um, obviously, this is just the beta, so it could still be improved by final release. So that's what I wanted to ask you, Anthony. Obviously, on the PlayStation 4, it looks really well. I mean, it looks looks really well. It looks really good. How does it look on the PlayStation 3 compared to, let's say, other first-person shooters on the PlayStation 3? Is it? Would you say it's, like, in graphics, top of the line? Or would you say it's kind of subpar? What would, how would you describe it? The graphics on the PlayStation 3 version of the game, you can really tell it was downported. Um, it, 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 what it reminded me of was kind of like what happened with Dragon Age. It, with Dragon Age 1, the console version of Dragon Age 1 was essentially a PC game that was downported to the PS3 and Xbox 360. And, what, and because they did that, everything looked kind of brown. It had stars from trees. Everything just looked kind of muddled. Um, you could just kind of tell that it was like a game that was meant to run on very high, but instead they had to adapt it for very low. Um, right, yeah, that's the thing with Destiny. Destiny, it's definitely supposed to be a, what is now called the current generation, it's supposed to be a current generation game. But obviously there's millions and millions of PlayStation 3s and Xbox 360s on the market compared to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, which are both off to a great start, but they still haven't sold near the, as many consoles because obviously the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, even by the time the Destiny comes out, they wouldn't have been out for a year yet. So obviously they don't want to lose on sales potential, especially when this is a half a billion dollar game. Obviously that's not upon the development, a lot of that's in marketing. But that's still a huge budget for a game. That means that if they sell, let's see, $60 a game, it's $500 million, 60, 10. That means if they sell 10 million copies, they might break even if they sell 10 million copies. So obviously, between the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, selling 10 million copies would be kind of tough. Could it happen? Yes, but it would be kind of tough. Because they were asking for an extremely like, high attach rate between the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, the Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. Now, obviously, this game's going to be out for quite some time. So as users buy the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, they can buy a copy. But if Bungie decides to do what they're doing now, where it's on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, make, selling 10 million copies isn't going to be a problem. They're obviously going to be marketing the hell out of this game. Millions and millions of people are looking forward to it. And the fact that even if you don't have a PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, you can still buy the game. I am willing to bet that within the first month, this game will sell over 10 million copies easily. I, get- I, I, would, say cl- I would say within the first two months, but yeah. I know, because it has a lot of the hype. Like, I know on the bot, it's like, from the you know from the people that brought you Call of Duty and Halo, so it's just like oh wow, way to way to use your power for evil. <laughs> uh, I mean, well, I mean, like really, that's what they're doing. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, it seems. I think that lifetime they could hit ten million on those two. Um, oh so. yeah, a lifetime definitely. There's no debate about that. Um, I just think that obvi- like if I was Bungie, I'd be doing the same thing because you have what 70, 80 million PlayStation 3s out there, about the same amount of Xbox 360s. So let's say 150 million consoles, but then between the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, you have less than 20 million. So it's like, do you really want to tap out that 150 million audience? Absolutely not. Because your profits will absolutely skyrocket by enabling that market. So it's not like, like Titanfall is a little bit different. Like People will bring up Titanfall and be like, well, that game didn't sell too well in the Xbox 360. The difference there, 
is that Titanfall was marketed as an Xbox One exclusive. Never once did you hear about Titanfall being on the Xbox 360. Unless you're a part of the games press, you probably didn't even know it was coming to the Xbox 360. Whereas with Destiny, it's been kind of clear that it's coming across various platforms. So, I definitely think between all platforms, I think we'll easily say 10 million copies sold within the first month. Because then you're just asking for 2.5 million copies sold on each console. I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. And you also got to remember that what, people are going to be buying consoles for this game. Oh, like absolutely. The, I know I know people that are waiting to buy a PlayStation 4 for Destiny. And Ky- guess what? Kyrie's, they have that Destiny bundle. Kyrie is buying that Destiny bundle last I checked. Oh, she's not buying it for Destiny. I'm not she's buying, buying it. it. I'm not buying, buying it. She's not... No, she's not buying, she's buying it for because Destiny, of the color. But, she doesn't but, care about Destiny. But she still, just wants the comes, color. It, it, comes, it comes with it, though, man. Comes with yeah. it. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. It's going to count as a sale. And then, you know, Anthony, just saying, you get a special white PlayStation. So, so, uh, <laughs> so. Well, let me, so let me ask you this, Anthony. So you say you're not buying a PlayStation 4 for Destiny. Does that mean you're going to be buying Destiny on the PlayStation 3? Or are you just going to be waiting out until you get a next generation or a current generation console? That kind of depends on a few important factors. First off, is it even cross? Is it like if I play it on the PS3, do no, I get to you play can't with you? play with you can't play against people on the PlayStation Four now? Bungie talked about that this past week. The reason why, which it makes some sense, and I can kind of agree why they're saying this, is that it's kind of the same situation as to why. PC users usually can't play with console users is the fact that there's kind of a disadvantage there. So with the PlayStation 4, the draw distance is much larger on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One version versus the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 version. So that kind of puts those users at a disadvantage because they're seeing a lot less than that of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One users, which then creates an unfair advantage. So that kind of answers your question there that Bungie confirmed that no. If you have the PlayStation 3 version, you'll only be playing with PS3 users. If you have the PlayStation 4 version, you'll only be playing with the PlayStation 4 users. Yeah, yeah, because of draw distance and stuff like that, like, that makes sense, you know. Because, you know, like, it, a perfect example is because you can do a better, more draw distance on PS4, you can probably see across an entire map versus on PS3, you'd probably only see half the map. And then... Right. I definitely, I see where they're going with that. So is that going to be a deal breaker for you, Anthony? Are you going to be holding off? Here's the problem. Hey man, Here, Anthony, here's here's the difficulty plugs. I'm seeing, okay? Because if I buy on a PS3, that means I can't play with you guys, because just about everyone on the staff is going to have on PlayStation 4. So that means the only I place I can play... I everyone is. I mean, yeah, everyone's going to play on the PlayStation 4, and if I play it on PS3, well... I basically get the worst version of the game. I know Aaron is buying a PS4 for that game. Yeah, so, and this is the hard part, okay, is that, um, sure, uh, if I buy a PS4 with it, that's great, but, ooh, man, that's, um, yeah, that's a hard decision, is, uh, do I really want to spend $500? Plus, I will, well, I for, will here. For, for for Destiny. No, 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 no. We're just gonna ignore that gifting of money thing for now. Oh <laughs> well, wanna, no, no. I, now, I, I now say, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, I was about to say one thing that could happen is, um, one thing that you could do is give blood, and that's that's like sixty dollars <laughs> a week, and there you go. Or. Or you could come work with me for two weeks and then quit. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh. Um. It, it, what? It's true. You, I can you, only imagine the face on Anthony right now. <laughs> gee. Well, they are viable solutions, so. But yeah, exactly. They're both really good solutions. Oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, I mean, I mean my job, you know, my job hires practically anyone. You'll be there for two weeks. You'll make your five hundred bucks. Be gone. Uh, or the, you know, the alternative is to give blood every week until the game comes out. And e- either either option would uh, 
Pay the bills. Oh. Okay, well, anyway. Would yeah, I, I buy a PlayStation 4? Convinced. Ideally, I'm going to get a PlayStation 4 next year. Or at least that's my goal because, well, a lot of things come out next year and it's like, well, um, it would be kind of nice. But... A drive club ah, Come on, drive. Man, seeing Drive Club at E3 was pretty darn cool. I, I it was sure. pretty darn cool. Um... I mean, I'm sorry, freaking the fact that they made the stability control light on the dash blink, and the fact that they did that in Gran Turismo and Forza hasn't even been able to pull that off yet is like, wow, I would buy this game just for the fact that they detailed the car so well, and then I realized, wait, that means I have to buy a PlayStation 4. Mm. Hey man, my, both of my solutions are valid. <laughs> they are valid, but... Yeah. I mean, come on. Hey, man, you sit in a chair and watch movies while you give blood. And it's going to be a good cause. True. Yeah. I will th- I'll think about it. Yeah, think like, about it. Don't know if I'm going to actually do it, but I'll think about it. I mean... Um, but anyway, I mean, here's the thing is that I, ideally, having a PlayStation 4 for Destiny is a good idea because here's the problem. Also, here's the problem because... PS4. Yeah, and it's like... A white PS4, which I think looks very nice. It looks very good. Um, but, and it's kind of important to be there for Destiny on day one because the problem with waiting is that, say, it's like February 2015 and I finally get Destiny. Well, that's four months of catching up I need to do. It's like, then, it's, it's like trying to catch up in an MMO. It's really hard because. There's so much. There's going to be so much content that's going to take you forever to catch up to your friends, and because your friends want to do the new content, uh, they're going to spend more time doing content, and they'll occasionally only help you for old content where it would be better if you were with them. It's, I mean, yeah, that's that's one that's one incentive to gain destiny early is that you're where most of your friends are, and you don't have to like do four well, months of catch up. Well, here's one and, question: and you know what? And we would have six. Hold on, we would have six staff members. At that point, with PS4s, if you joined us, so we'd have a fire team ready to go. We we we'd have a fire team for raids right off the bat. Boom, right there. Wouldn't even need anyone else. Just six people murdering everything. So, in fact, we do weekly meetings where we do our meetings in Destiny. There you go. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Well, here's a question I've got. Now, I don't know the answer. That's why I'm going to ask is if, let's say, someone were to buy the PlayStation 3 copy of Destiny, does their character um, transfer over to the PlayStation 4 version? I don't think it does. I don't. uh... That, I think, is stupid if they don't. Because there's going to be a I'm sure there's going to be quite a few people who buy it on the PlayStation 3, but then they consider getting on PlayStation 4 next year, but they're like, well, wait a second. My character doesn't transfer over like that's something that could easily be done because it's all stored in playstation network so it's something that could easily be done but i don't know bungie isn't going to support that i think and the same thing for xbox 360 xbox one like i can understand if like for example like um what's that one game coming out that they're doing that with um i'm not i'm not remembering oh grand theft auto so Grand Theft Auto, for example, Grand Theft Auto 5. They have a game coming out. You can even transfer your status from Xbox 360 to the PlayStation 4 because it's all stored online. So it's definitely possible. I don't know why Destiny would I mean, I don't know why Bungie wants to support that. So, because they want you to buy the fucking the, the, the PS4 now and get that version now, man. That's I why. guess, but oh, I don't know. But- I don't know. I think that'd be a, I think that'd be a smart move for them. So, Anthony, it sounds like you're not quite decided yet. So you don't you're not you don't know if you're going to be buying the PlayStation Three version or not, or if you're just well. Be here's the it thing. Out. I will. Here's the thing is that I am not buying it for the PS Three because if I buy it for the PS Three and then get my PS Four, then that means that I am buying the game like twice. And, and that's also, not, and that's not and that's not also no that's one expensive. you know is going to be playing that PS Three. I mean, I'm pretty sure your character can carry carry over. So I could spend four months playing alone 
on the PS3, you know, I trying to make what... I so he... hard if, like, Anthony plays by himself for an extended period of time, and then, like, finally gets the PS4 version, and he comes over and he just has this ridiculously badass character. <laughs> it's just this most I'm ridiculous... I'm like, sup, guys? <laughs> like, it's like, oh, hey, Anthony, why are you in all epics from the newest patch? Holy shit. You That's don't have funny. to worry about that, Bronson, because I'm playing Final Fantasy XIV in addition to Warlords of Draenor, and oh, basically I'm... you're just asking me to never have free time to, I don't know, maintain a life ever again. Uh, yeah, uh, I am. so Nick, you don't know about this because you you're not on the raid, you don't really play MMOs that aren't Destiny. Um, so I am buying Anthony's copy of the next Warcraft expansion so he'll play with me. Oh my gosh. I, 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 <laughs> that sounds desperation. Because <laughs> that, that, he, he won't get the... He, he, he wants to stay on Final Fantasy. And Quinn and I want him to come back to Warcraft with us, along with our friend Mark. So we are going to subsidize his copy of Warlords of Draenor. That's funny. Uh, so... So Anthony's yeah. definitely not buying on the PlayStation 3. I mean, it kind of depends on a few things. For one thing, I'm pretty sure that your character from PS3 carries over to PS4. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just that the realms are not crossed together. Uh, if they do that, I might get the PS3 version if I'm just not ready to spend money on the PS4. It's just that I'm going to spend a lot of time by myself. Um, whereas you guys get to go off and be beast every weekend. Darn. <laughs> the pains of going along um yeah so well but, I, like I, I just if anthony got that version it was it's just like he, he just comes on and he's just oh my god i'm forgetting the main character's name but he's like the main character of sword art online I and mean, he's just ridiculous at it uh just just this here's the thing machine. i might be ridiculously geared but i'm not ridiculously good at shooters yeah, I didn't good, play though. Halo as much as you did, Bronson. Yeah, I good. was in no way whatsoever competitive in Halo. At all. I don't know. I mean, like, when Mark and I were on the team, we carried pretty well. I, I don't mean, like we're... being carried. That's the thing. I don't like being carried because it just kind of says, oh, you suck, but we'll cover for you. And I'm like, but that doesn't mean I'm getting better. Well, I mean, you improved. I, I remember playing Halo with you. You improved. I didn't bit. feel like I improved. I mean, I just suck at shooters. Like, in Gears of War, the best I ever did was about, like, maybe a 1.2, 1.3 KD. That was the best I ever got at Gears of War 2. And I played Gears of War 2 a lot back in the day. Because it was, like, the only shooter I had that I had a friend to play with. But, you know, I'm, I'm like a guy, like, and like, I'm just not good at shooters. Um... As smart as I am, I'm not exactly the fast thinker, so it's just a little difficult. Um, I'm pretty sure if I played every single freaking day, which in the case of the MMO, maybe, but not very good at shooters. I don't have years of experience like other people. So are you 100% like absolutely not buying a PlayStation 4 this year? I wouldn't say 100%, although if I did say, actually, you maybe I should say 100% so Bronson can shut up. <laughs> he has been I'm spending... not giving up. I'm not giving up. It ain't happening. Well, Bronson, well, I am 100% not buying a PlayStation 4. Uh, I don't care. Not happening. Well, great. Buy one for me, then. Oh, you know what? I'm just saying. There you go. Okay, Anthony, if you uh, are Nick. that committed and I am 100% not buying PlayStation 4, you have to buy one for me, or get friends to help you buy one y for me. You know what, Nick? I think me, you, John, Bremen, and Kyrie to get him on this Destiny this train. This is so open to abuse. Can I just <laughs> say that? I could just lie about how I'm not getting a PlayStation 4, and you guys just basically bought one for me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, just... Of course, I, you all are going to have to, like, file whoever purchases it for me. In this case, the bronze is going to have to... You know, be sure to put it down as a business expense, but, you know. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. First off, if I do buy a PS4 for you, yeah, I'm absolutely putting up my tax return as a business expense. <laughs> absolutely. Not, not even, not even oh, thinking about that. Just like, <laughs> just, you know, just like, yeah, video editor needs one of these to capture footage. Uh, 
Well, that's, that, that, that. <laughs> I do. Who else is going to do a video review of Destiny when it comes? Ooh. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Video yeah. review of Destiny. Uh, that would be great. I mean, here's the thing. Like, if I was working at AT and T, I probably honestly would consider it. I mean, like That's the fact the- that you are willing to go out of your way to buy me a PlayStation Four when clearly <laughs> I will be at that time, I think, be able to actually afford one. I mean, can I buy a PlayStation Four? Like by the time Destiny comes out, absolutely. Do I want to bust the savings account to get one? Uh, uh, That's why you bust the plasma out. Plus the plasma. plasma. Again, I'll think about it. Yeah, besides, you need I'll, to help besides me I'll think about it. You need, to, you need to get on this train with me, Nick, to get him into this. Um, we'll discuss this off the podcast. <laughs> but right. Let's actually go into the uh, actual Destiny beta. So, Anthony, the confirmation we kind of, or the kind of information we get from him is he's definitely not buying on PlayStation 3. He's not 100% opposed to buying on PlayStation 4 this year, though. And he will wait to buy it on the PlayStation 4. Is that correct, I Anthony? Mean, okay, so let me put it this way. Um, this whole thing just kind of comes down to the date that I commit to buy a PlayStation 4. If it's early, I mean, if it's going to be obvious that I'm going to go on for a long time without a PlayStation 4, like, I'm not going to buy my PlayStation 4 until, like, late next year, I will get the PS3 version of Destiny if I like Destiny enough and don't think that so I'm going to. But there's so many good games coming out early next year. That's I mean, the thing. So That's the thing. That's the thing. Out, it like, depends fall, on when I... Like, Drive Club coming out, you know, like, two weeks after Destiny. I'm just yeah, saying. Okay. Drive Club two weeks after Destiny... Then early next year, you have Batman, The Order 1886. <laughs> Here's the thing. Like I said, it kind of depends on when I'm going to commit to a PlayStation 4. I happen to know that somewhere in 2015 is when I would definitely, for sure, 100% certainty, will already have a PlayStation 4 by the end of 2015. The hard part is figuring out when I really am compelled to go buy one. Because it could be early 2015 it could be late this year it could be middle of next year i'm gonna be honest um like like, let me put it this way i didn't buy like here's the thing let me put this way metal gear 4 was like the first super huge game that told people this is why you buy a playstation 3 metal gear solid 4 but i didn't actually buy that game buy my playstation 3 until um two years later when gran turismo 5 came out so it wasn't until like the end of 2010 when i bought my PlayStation 3. And so, and that's kind of like what I feel. It's like, I don't really buy a system just because it has one killer app on it. Oh, but hey man, th- this holiday, like, uh, I know you're kind of interested in Dragon Age. So... Like, Here's the cool. thing. After the Microsoft press conference, I was... Look, the Sony press conference, I was thinking, eh, I'm still maybe on the PlayStation 4. Whereas the Microsoft conference actually had me walking out of it thinking, I am actually thinking about getting an Xbox uh, but, One. But, but like, right, but here's the problem with that. You don't get the better version of Destiny. All of us are going to be playing Destiny on the PlayStation 4. You don't get Drive Club. All the multi-platform games will look better on the PlayStation 4. You guys stop saying Drive Club. I don't want to think about how gorgeous those cars are. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Please, I don't want to think about how gorgeous those games are. Those that's, cars, what we need I mean. to, that's what we need to do, Bronson. Just, just send me like, a poster of like just, Drive Club cars just on it. Every, I'm like, Damn. Like, just keep sending him Drive Club stuff to his address to where he cannot avoid it. Uh-oh. Every single day he gets in the mail, he gets a card with Drive Club on it. Actually, <laughs> yeah, there's a worse way. There's actually a faster way than mail, Nick. It's called electronic mail or text messaging. Yeah, but the thing is, email or text message, you can just delete or avoid. Something you get in the mail, your parents are going to give it to you and be like, Anthony, you got something in the mail. <laughs> God, no, 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 see, what I was thinking of is every Saturday he comes over to record wear my Drive Club shirt. There, there we go. <laughs> Or every, every day, day before every day. every day before you start the recording, watch a tr- watch a gameplay video of Drive Club. There we go. Uh, that could work. Um, well, okay. So Anthony, here's the thing though. Like, I know you're interested in Dragon Age, but that's that is most certainly coming out on PS4. So is The Witcher. So is this, like like I, what what were the big ones from Microsoft that wowed you? Things from Microsoft that wowed me. Uh, 
Well, to be honest, though, I'm, I'm going to be a bit honest. Most of what they wowed me was just how well they did their presentation. Well, right, um, but you got to look at it this basically, way. Basically, what, games, it was... what games did they show that you cannot play on the PlayStation 4? Um, the Halo Chief, the Halo uh, okay, Master yeah. Chief Collection. Okay. Um, I'm Forza definitely 2 not Horizons, not. maybe. I'm not really a, Hor- a Forza Horizon person. I just... I'm not. Um, Forza Horizon. What else did they show? Sunset the Overdrive third looks game, good. I don't know Sunset if that's Overdrive game, I kind of but... don't care about. The third game that poofed into my head was Crackdown, but I just realized I hate Crackdown. Not that it's ultra bad or anything, it's just I hated that freaking announcer. Why did Crackdown have to still live? Because it's sold. Uh, so I was, like, I was thinking like Master Chief came like, out. Uh, the Master I guess Chief I'm Collection. Too. Well, if you want, I mean, like the, last, the Master Chief Collection, you and I can play that co-op in my house. I know. That's look. That's, I, I guess I was like more wowed by Microsoft's quality of presentation than the actual stuff they were showing. <laughs> yeah, their so presentation was really good. Their presentation but... was really good. I walked out of it thinking like, man, I'm thinking about an Xbox One, and then I kind of and. I even said it on the freaking Xbox interview. It's just like, yeah, it looks like Dragon Age is the place to enjoy it. It looks like Xbox One is the place to enjoy Dragon Age. And then after like six hours later, I realized that was a really dumb thing to say because Dragon Age is just going to run better on the PlayStation 4, I think. Yeah. It's just that they showed it at Xbox. They showed it at Microsoft because the DLC comes first to Xbox One. And I'm like, I'm not really a DLC guy. So like, why did I say that again? <laughs> that's how good Microsoft's presentation was they kind of brainwashed me a bit for like the next six hours of the day yeah. then I sat in Sony's and then I had to sit there and listen to a guy talk about power <laughs> they showed Batman that's, that's, that's been, which, yeah. Yeah, fair enough Every, while Sony showed multi-platform games all the games that they did show will run and look better on the Playstation 4 so that's I mean that's something whereas well, no, Dragon Age all- I guarantee you if anything, Dragon Age is going to look the exact same on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. But even then, it might still look better on the PlayStation 4. So, I mean, we'll wait and see what happens. But let's actually get into the Destiny beta. We've been talking about pretty much this whole podcast so far has been trying to get Anthony to buy a PlayStation 4. Um, so let's go ahead and actually the Destiny beta. So, unlike the Alpha... I believe in the alpha you started, everyone started at level 4 and the max level was level 8. Well, the max level is still level 8, but you actually start fresh at level 1. So, you go through like this initial tutorial phase that was not in the alpha and you start as a brand new character as you will in the final game. Um, max level, like I said, still level 8. Um, a lot of the same environments, um, you're kind of doing missions in the same a lot of the same missions on earth and then you obviously have the tower which is pretty cool um but overall like i said destiny i just i cannot wait for this game although i do have one big concern and let's go ahead and talk about this so destiny's being marketed as this big like mmo like first person shooter you'll, you'll play it for months and months possibly even years and There'll still be things you can do, it's, which is what an MMO is. That's why a lot of people play MMOs, because you have the grinding phase, you're constantly leveling things up, and the game never ends, essentially. Well, with Destiny, I mean, Bungie's already come out and announced that the max level for the final game is going to be level 20. Now, I'll go ahead and address why that's a concern to me. Now, with the beta, the max level is level 8. I got to level 8 in about 4 or 5 hours of straight gameplay. Which means that to get to level 20, if I played an entire day, I might be able to get to level 20. Or definitely, for sure, within 2 days, if I played most of the day, I'll be able to get to level 20. So this game that I've been waiting years for, I'm already going to max my level out within 2 days. Now, I understand the whole aspect of upgrading weapons and such, but with MMOs, isn't one of the things that entices you to grind is, yes, upgrading your weapons, but increasing the overall level of your character? Okay, so uh, I think I have a lot of perspective from MMOs. I have a lot of perspective from MMOs, and here's what I can tell you. 
Not really. Like on in me... every MM in every MMO I've ever played, even if the leveling experience is enjoyable, it's about getting to the level cap. So you can do the raids or the PvP, whichever you prefer. So have, yeah. to, to me, this reminds me of the original Guild Wars, where the original Guild Wars had a cap of 20. But, it, you know, like, yeah, the, and the leveling experience in the original Guild Wars was enjoyable, but it, what, what you played it for was that end game, which I think the strikes, or those six-person, three- to six-person, you know, raids, we'll call them raids for, you know, the joke, it's kind of what they are, basically, um, are what are what brings you along, you're like, okay, what about upgrading your character more? I'm like, that's, that's the gear, you know, like, that's, yeah, like, the bit, like, I don't know, Anthony, you want to go ahead? Yeah, like, I play Final Fantasy XIV, and, and a lot of MMOs follow this path, and is Destiny going to follow it? I'm not sure, I'm not really too well informed on Destiny, but, um, Final Fantasy XIV has been out for about mm, 10 months now. It's been out for almost 11 months, I should say. And, uh, yeah, getting to level 50? Mm, two months. But what but keeps people... Yeah, what, you're what talking about... People... But here's the thing. You're talking about two months versus two days. Like, yeah... But, but like, a... here's the thing you have to remember. This some, is, people who, some people play their game so fast that they can hit level 50, hit the level cap, in less than a week. Some I mean, people like, are like that. Others, like me, who had college and, you know, responsibilities to handle, I didn't hit it until two months later. But even then, I've played the game for nearly 11 months now, and most of the stuff at level 50 you do, you're kind of... This is, MMOs do this all the time. You basically run the same place over and over and over and over again just so you can save up money or whatever currency you're saving up to afford this cool new weapon or this cool new piece of chest armor. Or, or you're um, fighting this, you know, this same raid over and over because A, you can't beat it because it's hard as hell and you're trying to figure it out, or B, uh, it drops a particular piece of gear that you want or need. I mean, um, at the end of the day, that's what you're doing in a conventional MMO. I don't know about Guild Wars or anything, but in the conventional MMO like Final Fantasy and Warcraft, you're basically just doing the same thing every single day or every single week just so you can get something that makes your character like 0.02% better. I, I mean, uh, that's really what you're just doing. Now, now that reward is why you keep doing the same thing every single day. It's kind of like how you work a job every single day and do the same task every single day. It's so you can work towards something bigger. And that bigger thing is that piece of armor that you can wear and say, hey guys, I beat this. And I got this. It's cool. Yeah, you know, or this mount, or, you know, or in the case of Destiny, the bike or the ship. Um... And I think another big, I guess, you know, thing that, yeah, I remember, like, in World of Warcraft, if you tell me, like, if I played World of Warcraft, like, I played Destiny over this weekend, I would probably hit level cap, like, go from 1 to 90 in about a week. You know, like, it, it's, yeah, level experience can be fun. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, DC Universe Online, when DC Universe Online came out, like, you can hit cap in a week. And personally, I don't think that's a bad thing because that's where the meat of the game is. So, like, that's, or at least with most of these games. I mean, I guess, I mean, I'm not by any means, I mean, I usually don't play MMOs. I'm going to be completely honest here. And that's why part of the reason why I'm really looking forward to Destiny is because I like the MMO aspect of games, but I don't like how most MMOs run, which is point and click. I don't like that. I like first person shooters, I like the MMO aspect. That's why I'm a huge fan of Borderlands. Like, Borderlands is one of my favorite franchises of all time. And Destiny is pretty much... The way I describe Destiny is it's Borderlands meets Halo meets Mass Effect. That's essentially what... Well, that's essentially what Destiny is. And, yes, I understand it. Like I said, I'm not... I'm, I guess my MMO experience comes from, like, Borderlands, for example. It's just my personal preference. I'd almost prefer to see Destiny have, like, a level cap of, let's say, like, 100 or something. And then have some weapons that you can't but, get until you're like level 90 or something because then you're constantly so, grinding the level of your character 
Here, okay, so here's the thing. That was Vanilla Warcraft. Like, yeah, Vanilla Warcraft had, like, Vanilla is, okay, I have to translate from the raid. Um, uh, original World of Warcraft, when it first came out, it took about four to five months for an average player to hit level cap. Uh, it took me about two, because I was in eighth grade and didn't have a life. Uh, and... Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, and like that experience is fine, but it also ends up being. It also means I am going to go into Duskwood and kill werewolves for three hours to get experience more efficiently. And like, I don't think Bungie wants that to happen. Well, yeah, like, not. Well, they that's they why... don't want like they don't want us like okay, let's go to old Russia and kill the fallen for four hours. Uh, well, see, that's why I want, and like I said, I'm sure they will. It's just, I don't know, maybe, like, the idea of Destiny has me super excited. Like, I've played it, the game plays awesome, I'm really looking forward to the game. Maybe I'm, like, I have too high of expectations, because, like, with Bun- like Destiny, like, how I think this game would be perfect is if they overloaded this game with so many freaking missions. Now, like, understand that some missions may have to be in the same location, and I'm fine with that as long as they're different missions. They overloaded the freaking game with so many missions to where you wouldn't have to repeat that often. Like, if you repeat, you have to repeat each mission like once or twice, that's fine. But I think it'd be cool, and like I said, this is my personal opinion, is have it to where there's so many freaking, like, they already said how they're gonna have like the whole solar system. So, what, we're gonna have like seven, eight planets or whatever. Have like each planet have like ridiculous amount of missions. Like each planet have like 30, 40 missions. So you're talking about a total of like 200 some missions. Just because it's like Destiny's this game that it's kind of being marketed as this game that's going to last a super long time. And I just feel like if each planet only has like five to seven missions, you max out a level 20. People are going to be fully maxed out and have nothing to do in this game a well, month but, after release. Well, so that's that's the MMO. That's that's where the MMO part comes in. And yeah, you're done leveling, but then there's gearing, and then once you're geared, you're going to have you know whatever the the raid or the raid is for this. So it's like okay, well, you know, like the raid is this boss. You know his mechanics are this, this, and this. This is how we find them as a group, and so on. Like, like it's like yeah, like most MMOs roll that way, where it's like yeah, le- leveling is part of the game, and it and it takes a while, but that's just to that's just what you do to get to the 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 meat of the game, I guess what you would call it. Uh, like that's yeah, like that's not. I guess here's here's know. the other thing too. MMOs, um, Warcraft has this problem, Final Fantasy XIV has this problem, is that you will always have that small minority that plays the game a lot, a lot, and will complain that there isn't enough endgame content. Now, if the average player who games frequently like we do finds that there's a lack of endgame content, then that's going to be a problem against the game. But in any MMO, there's going to be those people who play it like 16 hours a day who will get everything done and then complain that there isn't enough to do. Whereas, like for me, in Final Fantasy XIV right now, you know, there's still a huge amount of stuff I can still do. It's just I don't want to do it. But if I ever get bored, hey, why not? Maybe I can go out and kill, do hunts and kill this monster. Or, uh, you know, hey, I, uh, maybe I'll just pass high next street one day. <laughs> but if the average person runs into a wall really easily and they're not having enough content to keep people satisfied, then we will, then yes, uh, then there is a problem of there isn't enough endgame content. Because uh, that is really important. It keeps an MMO alive. And if most people finish your game and feel like there's nothing left to do, even though it's supposed to be this constantly evolving thing, then they'll go away. And that's not something you want when you make 
an open a uh, massive multiplayer game like this. Right, and Bungie's a smart studio. I mean, they're the developers behind one of the most successful video game franchises of all time, Halo. They're smart, but this is their very first time at an MMO. So, obviously, they're going to have DLC here and there, and they're like they've already said that when they do decide to come up with sequels, because Destiny's definitely going to make millions and millions of dollars, so obviously they're going to make a sequel, is that when they do make a sequel, you'll be able to transfer your character over, which is good. Like I said, I'm just... I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's because I'm like I'm so excited for Destiny. Like, I don't think there's too many people excited for Destiny as I am. And I guess I'm just so excited that I have kind of too high of expectations, because I really want this game to be a game that... Hey, I played the mess out of it, and two months from now, I still have a ton of missions I still need to do. Like, that's why I like about Borderlands. Like, and maybe that's kind of where some of my expectations are coming from is, well, Borderlands, the level cap's much higher. There's so many things to do. Like, Borderlands lasts a super long time. I just, I really hope that Bungie executes on Destiny. I really, really hope so. We'll see what happens, though. The game comes out in less than two months, September 9th, so I have Ooh, super high expectations. That's pretty close. It's just like, oh, man, why do I have to make this decision? It's like, do you want to get a PlayStation 4? Yes, it comes yeah, out less than two months. Yeah, yeah, less than two months. Two months. Less than two months. Why am I doing this to myself? I should shut up. <laughs> Bronson, I don't want to make like Bronson's said, job any easier. Every single weekend, just show them Drive Club gameplay footage. Yeah, but Drive Club doesn't come out until two weeks after Destiny, so I have a little bit more time. Until, of course, everyone lights up my Facebook and says, Destiny is the best game ever, and I'm like, no, yeah, I don't want yeah. to miss Every, out. Everyone get on that. If you, you know, I know Solid Kratos no, you know, he, I'm on, like, knows, knows me through Facebook. So I hit Anthony up. Uh... Like, yo, Anthony, you should, you should get on that PS3 or PS4. Yeah. Hey, Anthony, you know you love that stability blinking light on the dash of your of the Mercedes. <laughs> I just if only weird. we could, I, if only we could intercept Anthony's dreams. And that plant, would be like, scary. Fucking, and plant, and plant drive, play, drive every single night. So it's like Anthony can't go to sleep without dreaming about Drive Club. <laughs> it's like I mean, the only way was, he, the only way he can get can, out of his uh, mind is by playing the game. Nick can testify this. Um, when we were up uh, meeting up with Sony for interviews on the Order 1886 and Drive Club and um, Little, Little Big, Big Planet 3, 3. yeah, uh, I kept wanting to like go back to the Drive Club station and just say, I just want to look at that car interior some more and just drive a bit. It like, was the craziest I, I was, thing because it's like I'm asking questions about like, how many tracks are going to be? How many cars are at Anthony? is like, I just love how this light in the interior of the car lights up. <laughs> hey, I care about that because this is my logic behind it is that there are like two things about racing games that re- about racing, quote, simulators, unquote, that drive me nuts. The first is, is that they simulate a car. Fi- like the physics are great. Like Grand Turismo does physics great. And Forza does a better job of making a car look nice. But... They talk so much about how a car, you know, how they got this many polygons into it, how they got this texture. Oh, look, Forza 5's got the finest detail in paint and carbon fiber. And they don't simulate their dashes 100%. That annoys me. And the other thing that annoys me is I just wish more cars had, I wish they had like a more bigger variety. Like, I would love to drive a Crown Vic in Forza. Yeah, I'm never going to win any races, but I just love to drive a Crown Vic. Hell, I will even drive a Camry because every car, every racing game has a Ferrari in it, so... Ugh. Anyways, but yeah, like, for them to simulate a car to that detail, to me, that just kind of says, this feels like the next step forward that Gran Turismo has to do with their cars. Simulate, you know, dashboards. Because let's be honest here, when you drive a car in real life, what do you do to the car? Well, your car has a lot of warning lights on it, and every time you turn your car on, they all light up to tell you if your car's okay or not. So I feel like that's kind of like an important step in having an immersion with the car is having those lights, not just a bunch of moving needles and numbers changing. Um, that's like another now, thing too. Let's be fair, would... Gran Turismo had like a thousand cars. Now, yes, yeah, only about, what was it, like well, 100 of the, Yeah, but here's yeah, the thing, Gran Turismo premium. doesn't... Drive Club only has 50 cars. But every single one of those cars is designed 
pretty much perfectly, and they said that it took them seven months of man time to make each car. A lot of time for each car. So, I don't know. I, I'm definitely looking yeah. for the drive club. I mean, I've been, I'm still playing Forza 5 on a regular basis. I love racing games. So, I I'm love, extremely excited like, for drive club. It's like, I love open city games that are like um, Midtown Madness 2 or uh, Driver San Francisco. I like racing simulators like GT6 and uh, Forza 5, but racing simulators are kind of boring me because. It's like we're taking little itty bitty steps forward, but it's not exciting me like you know, like Forza Two did. Um, so uh, I don't know, like Drive Club. It's just for me the biggest appeal of Drive Club is the detailing to the cars because when I was driving it, I wasn't exactly paying attention to the uh, <laughs> driving physics. If anything, Nick can testify that uh, <laughs> I crashed. I crashed a lot because I wasn't really connecting with the physics. Like, yeah, I wish like- it was a driving sim. But I was it's just like, spending more big, time in the interior just turn. making... It is a big sharp turn coming up and Anthony's too busy looking at the lights in the car. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I got first I place spent, in spent my all... drive club race. Yeah, see, like, Bronson, like Bronson would actually beat me at a racing game because I'm like, Bronson, I'm enjoying the fact that I'm losing oil pressure because I crashed too much. I don't think they simulated that, actually. Um, I mean, they detailed all the cars, but I kind of feel like maybe they didn't really get everything. I'm going to be annoyed. But anyways... Drive Club impresses me the most because of the detailing they gave to the cars. Because if I wanted simu- if I wanted physics, I play Gran Turismo Six. Gran Turismo Six has amazing physics. The fact that they could make a car, you the fact that you can feel the weight of a car shift around playing GT Six, that's wow. That's that's very good. Like GT. I mean, if for some reason, if I'm crazy enough to not buy a PS4 in 2014 or 2015, GT7 is going to do it. Gran Turismo is going to do it. That's why I bought a PlayStation 3. It's because of Gran Turismo. I, did, I mean, Uncharted is nice, I guess. And, oh, uh, yeah, well, I like Arkham Asylum. I don't know why I didn't like Arkham City. We should do, we should play through Arkham City. We should. So, you probably need to give me some pointers so I don't, uh. You know, yeah. But well, oh, all right, man, so drive club cars are so beautiful. I mean, it's well, and that's Bronson, not even that's not that's not even the Anthony's weak team. point is. I mean, I looked at Forget a Forza, Destiny. It's all about drive club. Let me put it him. this way: I almost wanted to buy an Xbox One because all you had because I was I did because we did a sixty minute a, because uh I think we did sixty minute access of uh, Forza Five. We did. I rented it for that. Yep. Yeah, you rented it. And I remembered I had to get some pictures. Now, Bronson's TV wasn't exactly the best TV. It's, it's like projector-based, so it's not the sharpest. So it didn't look as good as it could have. But I went on the internet because I had to Google search some images to make our uh, pictures for the articles. Um, and then I remember I searched it up, and I see this 19... 19- 99 or something like that nissan skyline r34 gtr and i just sat there and i stared at that car and i looked at it and i'm like those headlights the detail <laughs> and that's just forza 5 a launch title on an xbox one drive club gt7 wow yeah, drive uh, yeah, club like, 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 yeah, yeah i'm gonna get suckered in at some point yeah, but let's let's go ahead and head back into Destiny. I swear, this is like the podcast. It's like how to pitch a PlayStation Four console to a car enthusiast. Like that, that's what this podcast has been about. You email this to Sony. Be like, hey, you guys want your car enthusiasts? It's like send <laughs> Anthony a top secret picture of something of a car in GT Seven, and make sure it's a Ford Crown Vic. <laughs> and I and then I and then once I see like a two thousand uh, two thousand five Ford Crown Victoria, and then. It's detailed that good. I'll be like, Polyphony, you just. Pay- <laughs> yeah. The gamer access spends a, sends a special request to the Polyphony digital team to include this very exact car just so they can force a person to go buy a PlayStation Four. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. could happen. For all I know, they'll just send me a secret picture of Crown Vic, and I'm like, fuck. 
Or they'll just send a real picture of a Crown Vic and be like, oh, the game looks just as good anyway, so we'll just send them a real <laughs> picture. Send them a real picture and be like, that's not a PlayStation 4. <laughs> but going back into Destiny, so played through the missions. I mean, let me just put it this way. Obviously, it's a beta, so obviously they're not going to put too much of the game in there. But by the end of the day... By the end of the first day I played it, which was Saturday, because it came out Thursday, but Thursday and Friday I was too busy. So Saturday, within, I'd say about five hours, I was already level eight. I'd already beat all the missions in the beta, and obviously there's still more unlocking to do. But for the most part, I was just like, okay, what do I do now? Um, obviously, there's the Crucible, which the Crucible pretty much allows you, in the beta, there's only zone Three controls. Maps. There's three maps. Yeah, which is... I've only played two. I've played the one on the moon and then one I, on Venus. I literally just got to the third map on Mars while we're talking right now. Yeah, I haven't so. played on that level. but So it's zone control, and, I mean, just like any other game, there's three spawn point, uh, three flags you capture and hold them, and the more you hold, the quicker you reach your... Um, your point threshold that you need to win, or whoever has the highest score at the end of the time. It's that type of uh, gameplay, which it's cool, but here's the thing. Like, I was playing it, and I was having a lot of fun. But it's just like with Borderlands. Like, I'm not looking forward to Destiny for PvP. I'm looking forward to the co-op and the missions and upgrading my weapons. Like, yeah, I'll play PvP, but I honestly, like... Over time, I've just gotten kind of bored of PvP. I've been, I mean, all these games, the same exact types of gameplay. It's like, yeah, team deathmatch, deathmatch, zone control, capture the flag. Like, I'm getting kind of bored of that. But the co-op missions, that's what really has me in, like, really yeah, has me excited for Yeah, you got to fight Republo with, uh, with Quinn and I today. Yeah, the Republo. <laughs> We won't go into why it's that name because we don't want to offend people. But, but uh, yeah, it's. I mean, I've played the Devil's Lair, which is the most difficult mission in the game, which is yeah, we did it on the hard because, today. Yeah, we, we played did. it hard because it's funny because I remember the first time I played it and I was like level six, seven. It was such a pain in the ass. I mean, the as Bronson calls it, Republo, or what are the, the game's called? The what? The Survivor? Is that what it's called? Which one? The uh, what you called the Republic. Oh yeah, uh, no, the Circus Prime. The Circus Prime, yeah. So the Circus Prime, and then you fight like this spider robot or whatever. It's such a pain in the ass. But it's like now that I've like upgraded my character and got new weapons and played a couple times, it's like so easy. So it's like the beta. It's like the missions. Why am I gonna play the missions? Because I've already done them all several times. And then the PvP, that's not what I'm really interested in with Destiny. So it's like the beta's kind of like within a day or two days, I've kind of gotten sick of it already. Um, well, so, so doing missions over and over again, that you're going to have to get used to because that's just MMOs, man. Which, I mean, that, that I'm fine with. I guess it's just the only thing with the beta is that the. Uh, I, once you hit level eight, you're level capped. So, and yes, I've like I've already maxed out my auto rifle to its highest level. I mean, I guess my armor can still be leveled up, but for the most part, it's like I've maxed out everything in the beta. So, I guess once the final game comes out, like I don't I don't mind playing the same mission over and over again as long as I'm getting something out of it. Like if I'm playing over and over again for nothing, I'm gonna get bored of it really quick. I want to feel like I'm getting something, whether it's some in-game currency I'm getting or this new weapon that's better than what I had before, just something. So, but overall, yeah, I'm really, I'm really impressed with the game. I mean, it's kind of what I expected. I have, like, as you guys tell by now, I have extremely high expectations for Destiny, which could be a good or a bad thing. I mean, the good thing is I'm super excited for it and it has the potential to be my game of the year. I guess the bad thing is because I have so high expectations, I could be easily pissed off by something that isn't that big of a deal. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I mean, I definitely can't wait till the final game comes out, and I'll reserve any judgment until then. But the gameplay spot on. I love the leveling up 
mechanics and how I love the tower, how you like go into the tower. It's like this third person view and there's different people that can upgrade your weapons and like different people that um, can like, there's these things called, what are they called? Encryptograms or something like yeah, that. So, yeah. Something like that. And you go see this guy and he encrypts them for you and they unlock like new gear and weapons. That's pretty cool. You can like see all these other people online at the same time. It's really cool. It's funny because when I go in there, the first thing I think about is like PlayStation Home. Like you go in there and it's like it instantly reminds me of PlayStation Home. Um, so funny. Uh, but then and then obviously Destiny has like you can do like these dance moves. So like every time you go into the tower, you see people dancing everywhere. And you can even dance when you're not when you're doing missions. You can dance. Uh, but but it's gonna be proper MMO. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, overall, I'm just super impressed. Um, I mean, I've been talking a lot about Destiny. Anyone have anything else they want to say about the game uh, yeah, no, before we move on to the next topic? I need to play it a bit more because yeah, I'm I mean, only level four and I haven't done the PvP yet. I mean, I only watched Bronson do the PvP, but the PvP looks kind of exciting. It's territory type. There's like territory type matches. They call it control, and I like territory type matches. I played a lot of it back in the Gears of War 2 days, and Bronson probably remembers how um, I was lousy at deathmatch, but when it came to territory, I I got better. Suddenly, <laughs> magically. I, it's like, a territory type matches is what I'm better at. And, you know, I kind of feel like, ooh, I could see myself playing a lot of those territory type matches. Um, I also want to play the, uh, the uh, Hunter and Warlock classes. Yeah, currently I'm, only I'm titan, currently I'm playing pre- as a titan. It, like titan seems I'm to be your pretty. Also. Yeah, titan seems to be like your pretty uh, standard um, soldier, your standard soldier, and uh, with a pretty <laughs> that packs a pretty awesome punch. Literally, I That's mean, so freaking awesome. the fact that the fact that your punch is equal to about like four or five bullets is pretty darn awesome. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's, I love it. it. It's like, like once you level up, it gets to the point where like. Level two and three, you could just like go around punching the shit out of them. It's it's, it's insta kills. It's like who needs a knife? It's like the hunter comes. I was like, I've got a knife, and I'm like, well, I've got a fist that does does as well. Which, by yeah. the way, the knife in that game's hilarious because when you knife somebody, they also get they get knocked back, so it's like a concussion knife. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but I'm guessing the stabbing force was strong enough to knock a person back. I guess. But yeah, I need to play, I need to try out more classes. Um, it's only level eight, so you know I don't know how long the beta runs. Runs until the game comes out, right? No, the beta runs until like the twenty seventh. Oh, so only a week left. A week left from to, from tonight. Okay, yeah, I need to play other classes, level up some more. Um, looks very good. It it kind of has that Last of Us quality where it is so well made that it's to the point where it's hard to find something wrong with it. And you know, shooters aren't my thing. And, like, that's the only thing I could say, but that's just personal preference. But, you know, it, it looks really good. I mean, and even on the PS3, it doesn't look as good, but it runs well enough. I mean, load times are reasonable. I don't see any major frame rate drops. Seems good. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's the next question I had wanted to ask before we move on was, if there's anything you could have Bungie improve or add to this game, what would it be? Um, it feels, it feels I wish, a little... like I'm. I'm sure that there's probably more to it than what they show in the beta, but I wish that the character customization was deeper. Well, that's yeah. That's one thing I noticed is that like I'm not big on character customization, so that's not too big of a deal for me. Uh, but I noticed when you're customizing your character, you can't like spin the character around, which is really weird because that's like a standard feature when creating a character is being able to like see the character like the back of the character as you're like customizing its helmet or whatever you can't do that which i'm sure with it being just the beta within the final game they'll probably have that but yeah my problem with destiny is um it feels a little caved in uh the world feels a little caved in like it's like um okay guys uh, welcome to uh, old Russia on Earth, but it all kind of looks the same. And not to mention, there's like only one city. 
you can go to and even the city isn't very big like it has the mmo feel but at the same time it doesn't because in an mmo uh, or at least traditional mmos you have many cities you can go to and and it's kind of cool because it kind of gives this sense of adventure a sense of exploration tells you ah here th this region is different from this region and that kind of stuff and i have a feeling that Maybe like uh, like with Venus and Mercury and the Moon, I'm pretty sure there would be cities you would visit. I mean, it makes sense to put cities on them, but at the same time, the last city is literally that. It's the last human stronghold. So I kind of feel like there's only one hub, and then there's all these missions surrounding it. Whereas I kind of like to explore a little bit. It's, you know, it's kind of like that Mass Effect 2 thing where I like to occasionally just randomly go to uh, Ilium and just say, man, Ilium looks pretty freaking awesome. And then find out that they have indentured servitude there. <laughs> or I could go to Chichanka and then find out uh, Krogan... Krogans are kind of crazy, actually. Um, you yeah, know, stuff like that. So, it, the world feels a little small what it feels like um but you and you never know it could get really huge it's only oh yeah it's yeah it is the beta so right. i'm sure we will see uh it expand but so um cool. not much on news stories dark souls 2 is getting some dlc called crown of the sunken king where you explore a vast sunken city so that's happening uh the Surface Pro 3 is out. So if you are looking for a tablet that has some of the functions of a laptop, they got At an astronomical price. Yeah, eight hundred dollars. Like nine hundred and thirty after you get the That's the... just crazy. Like I know why, because it's essentially a desktop and a tablet like device, but damn that's expensive. I, like, I not even the iPad's that expensive. Like, Bremen has one, and, like, if, if you do what he does, it's worth it. But otherwise, I don't see it. Um, yeah, like, what are you realistically going to do on a tablet that requires well, so much power? Um, well, here's the thing, though. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm guessing it's more like kind of like a professional kind of device. You kind of, It's kind of like how you ask yourself, like, why do you ever need a laptop with that much power? Well, well for a someone like different, though, because a I know, laptop I know, but still, doing hardcore gaming. Well, still, I'm just saying, like, if you don't play games. I'm just going to say that. Um, you don't well, play games. Video game, editing. Like, like I said, I feel like the Surface Pro 3 is more for, like, professional use. Uh, because, first off, the fact that it's a tablet means that's easier to carry. You don't have to fold it open. And when you fold it open, it isn't, like, this big bulky thing that you need to find a table for. You can just kind of, you know, it just, it's more compact. Um... And I feel, I feel like it's a professional device. It's kind of like high-end laptops. Like, why does anyone ever need a high-end laptop? Well, sometimes you just need uh, you need power on the go. In the case of the Surface Pro, it's easier to carry. Um, granted, you can't type as easily because it's all a touchscreen, and you have to buy like an extra accessory, or it comes with one. It comes with a keyboard, but I think it's more for portability purposes. Um, uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't own a laptop I don't own... right now, but if I did, I would, I'd personally go with the iPad. But that's I I'm a have fan no of use for a tablet right now, so I mean, I'm still trying to understand what tablets are about. I just understand that if you're a person looking for a really, really simple device that's very easy to carry around, tablets are a pretty good compromise. Um, they're just. The Apple ones, at least, or the iPads are expensive. Yeah, the like, cheap I, Androids I, aren't very good, as far as I can tell. But, you know, it's just, but, it's kind of know. like, tablets are a little specific for me, but everyone buys them because it's like, I want an easy way to check my email. Well, you don't want to fold your computer open, but you want to be able to carry it anywhere in your house. So tablets are just really easy. It's just like a smartphone with, with a bigger screen. Yeah, at least I, that, that's it's like it's like, more like for the convenience. I feel like for me, like I, play, I I would like to get an iPad Mini eventually, literally just as an e-reader to read books. Um, all right, I got one last news story. Oh man, it has been a slow news week. Um, 
been so slow. Uh, Harmonix posted a, sent out a survey to rock fan fans, you know, people on their mailing list, asking if they'd be interested in a new rock band on PS4, Xbox One, and Wii U, a new rock band on legacy consoles, such as, you know, PS3, 360, and Wii, new DLC, or new instruments. Uh, the pipeline of rock band DLC uh, released for five years. So Rock Band put out DLC from when it launched in the fall of 2007 until April 2013. It's currently developing Fantasia, Music Evolved, and the musical first-person shooter Chroma, along with um, a sequel to Amplitude that was kickstarted, and Dance Central, another Dance Central. I don't know, you guys be down for another Rock Band on the new systems? I would have all my DLC carried over. Uh, oh, I've never been a big cost. fan of. I've the never cost. been a big fan of rock band and guitar hero, so that doesn't really matter to me. The cost is what I'm worried about, because, I mean, everyone was okay with it back in '07 when, um, you know, plastic instruments were on the rage, but they weren't cheap. They were really expensive. Yeah, like so, what was the full rock band kit? Was it like 150 bucks or something like that? Yeah. Not it's bad. like like Rock Band is amazing, and and you know that one hundred fifty dollars was well worth it. But the music band genre thing just died hard. It died really hard, and now it's it's pretty much kind of dead now. So it's like yeah, with Activision is, coming out with a fucking like what two or three Guitar Heroes a year didn't help. <laughs> Green Day, everybody. Green Day, the Beatles, uh, Metallica. <laughs> It's like, come on. I mean, I'm honest, the craze well, was great band, for I'm surprised, they didn't, I'm surprised they didn't come out with one for, like, freaking Justin Bieber. Like, <laughs> the, Actually, Justin Bieber the way, is more... Game. No, Justin Bieber is more of a um, singing thing than a uh Yeah, I band know. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. Anyways, um, right, so, so yeah, that, that, that's my concern. It's just the cost, and is there any interest left? Because the genre died so hard. Because it, it, it's it's like one of those things that you would say is so two thousands. It's like what was extremely two thousands about game? Like you know how everyone you know there's like stereotypes for decades, right? Like the seventies was disco, and the eighties was um, you know the music and that stuff like that. Like you know it's stereotypes. Like two thousands for gaming. Uh, the Wii, uh, plastic instruments. <laughs> Remember Wii music? That was amazing. That was the worst. That I hated. <laughs> I still, I man, I, you're just causing me to hate Nintendo just thinking about it because I remember, remember watching and thinking this could be awesome. They dimmed the lights and it's like it could be a Star Fox. It could be wait what? Remember the drummer? And the do 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 do. I just I just sat there and I like this like 2008 was just like. It was that ridiculous roller coaster where you didn't know if you hated Nintendo or liked them? Just, oh, man. but everyone still wanted a Wii, so. Oh. Yeah, it's like I got the first Rock Band, but it's like after the first Rock Band, I was like, okay, this is cool. But like other than that, uh, I'm like, nah. The second I, one, the second one is the one that my friends and I got a mi- lot of mileage out of. Um, but. I don't know. Like, yeah, I'd be, I'd be down, but it's only if my DLC carried over and a bunch of other factors. Uh, on to questions and comments. The rad news stories. Uh, we know. That yeah, WB... sorry for the short podcast, guys. There isn't really any news. I mean, we talk about sports and how it's raining. Uh, sports. <laughs> oh, sports. NFL season's coming up. I cannot wait. TV. Sports. TV. We talk about TV. <laughs> Actually, no, Call we can't because I don't have cable television in my house. We do. We could talk about Call of Duty. Actually, I can talk about TV a little bit because I recently went to Best Buy, and Samsung came up with. I know everyone's heard of this before because they announced it years ago, but they came up with the curved TV. I mean, it's not like heavily curved; it's just slightly curved. Yeah. And I remember, and these things cost like, I think fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars more than a conventional television of the same kind of image quality. And I stood there with the sales guy, and he and I and he found me looking at it. And so he told me a little bit about it, about how he says, "Oh, it's for parties," 
Because what happens is that when you're standing a little bit too much to the side, you can still see the full image of the screen. Whereas with a flat screen, you can't see anything. So I'm like, so it's for people who like to watch TV. Like the back of my head was like, so it's for people who like to watch TV a bit sideways. Because <laughs> I have never found a situation where in my entire life... Um, I can understand if you have like a bunch of people over for like a football game or something. Yeah, maybe. like for example, you're at, you're trying to grab a drink, but because you're at an awkward angle, you can't really see what's on the TV. So, all right, yeah. that's that's our random television news. Yeah, that's uh, television news. <laughs> Very expensive. I see absolutely no. I mean, I the guy said it was for parties. I'm like, you know what? That does make sense. But even then, would that really justify paying fifteen hundred dollars more? than a conventional flat TV. No. All right, so... I mean, I would rather go buy 4K. They're like two grand now. Yeah. Which is amazing how fast those things plummeted in price a year and a half later. Because at CES yeah. 2013, those things had just been announced and they were costing 13 grand. And I was like, you could buy a brand new small car with that money or a very good used car. Or yeah. you could buy yourself the world's most ridiculous Mac Pro. Or you could buy yourself a 13 really nice computers or you could buy yourself the most ridiculous games library or you could okay, save that so money I'm, for the- <laughs> I'm moving this along yeah sorry cray t we know what cliffy b is working on but if you have work on having him work on any game what would it be unreal that's I'm a good one even though i've never yeah. played it what would that's Cl- a good question like, what is what is cliffy b sister years of war unreal i don't know i guess and my Jazz thing Jack is Rabbit. that i guess my thing is i love the gears of war franchise Except Gears of War, uh, what was it? Uh, I always get it. I always call it Gears of War Ascension. I always get that in God of War. Their names confused. What's it? Gears of War. What was it called? The prequel. Was it called Judgment? Gears of War Judgment. Yeah, I did not like that game. I mean, it was all right, but it was definitely the worst of the franchise. So, I mean, I'd honestly, if I could choose, I'd like to see him come out with another Gears of War, but he be the head of it, come out for Xbox One, and it'd be just as awesome as the other games. I'm a huge Gears of War fan. Okay, so um, it's hard yeah. to imagine Cliffy B working on something besides Unreal Tournament or Gears. What about you, Anthony? I feel like some new original project. Um, I don't know. It's like I feel like I want to feel like he's like working on some. I feel like I want him to work on some project that's sort of like Sunset Overdrive. But doesn't have to deal with zombies because I just remember that, you know, Cliffy B was like Gears of War. And what do I remember about Gears of War? <laughs> Hilariously cheesy stories. And I just kind of feel like, you know, work on some kind of like game that's supposedly work on some shooter that's just kind of like mocking itself along the way or something like that. Uh, lots of blood, of course, because, you know, Gears of War. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe a new Unreal would be nice. I mean, it would be nice for me to try an Unreal game and see what the craze is about. Oh. All right, well, last question is from um, Solid Kratos. No news, post a meme. In all seriousness, by the way, no novel this time. I've been, pl- I've been playing my Vita and been addicted to Persona 4 Golden. So I love slash hate you, Bronson. I seriously can't <laughs> stop playing. I literally started playing my Vita instead of my PS3, which scares me. Anyway, I haven't passed it, but I recently learned a Persona on a Q, which is on the 3DS, which, fuck, I, now I need to get it. But before I need to pass uh, Persona 3, before I play Q, I saw the Japan Persona Q Velvet 3DS, and I want it. So, yeah, love slash fuck you, Bronson. <laughs> uh, yeah, that DS does look rad. I tried to win one of those at E3, but apparently I was not picked. Um, so, uh, continuing Random forward. News. The- Random news. Random news. Because DJ is a multi plat website, we have to talk about Android devices. Shut up. <laughs> no. The <laughs> LG G3. Shut up. Just came out. <laughs> Shut up. No one we cares. We are a multi plat website. Let's talk about, we the gotta, we gotta, Let's some, talk about look, the Look. Somebody on the staff has to have an Android phone, okay? Every, while you are you the pe- only one. You while the you one. people get to enjoy the world candy land of Apple, 
I get to, I have an Android device, okay? This website is multi-plat. We need to stay, you know, unbiased here. Uh, so l- let me let me let me so talk. Let's also talk about Anyways. the Lumia N nine one twenty. Actually, I want to talk no, about. No, I, actually, I want to talk about the LG G three because that's like the newest high end smartphone I, that just came I, out from LG. No, I want to talk about how Andy Anthony having an Android is the most annoying shit ever when it comes to getting news about the site out or communicating with the website. So everyone on the staff besides him has an iPhone four S or better. Okay. Which means we are all in this, which means if I want to send news to the website or have a conversation with the website, I just use an iMessage that goes to everyone. Except Anthony gets individual texts from (laughs) everyone instead of the iChat. And it's the most annoying shit ever. Because that means I have to make something special just for him. No, no, I get your messages. It's just that when I reply, it doesn't get to everybody. So I usually don't. Now here's the thing. I just use the regular default texting app on the Android. I don't know if changing to Google Hangouts does that. So if anybody has an Android device, please let me know if it's actually kind of possible if I can actually see the entire iOS group chat and if I just need to change to Hangouts. Because the default app doesn't do group, as far as I can tell. Anyways, we are a multi-plat website, so I will talk briefly about the LG G3. Um, I have an LG G2, which last December was LG's uh, flagship phone, and it's a nice phone, blazingly fast. So what they did with the the, um, LG G3 was they made it bigger, (laughs) and I don't know if I'm a big fan of that, I'll be honest, because they made it bigger because... They freaking fitted a quad HD screen on this. Like this screen has more pic- has more resolution than 1080p. It's huge, and it's like the first smartphone of this size, I think, that came with a screen like that. And people are concerned with how huge it is, and I am too because it's like I kind of like my phone to fit in, like like if I, like an iPhone 5s, right? That seems like a good size, um, decent thickness, reasonably small, nice screen. Like, I don't need my my uh, phone to get big to the point where it's more like a notepad than a, than a phone. <laughs> but uh, anyways, the LG G3 just uh, came out recently. Uh, so which means that you can probably get a G2 on a pretty decent deal. And G2s are pretty nice. Um, aside okay. from the fact that it's an Android and, do- and has some usability problems. And the fact that it has some software bloat that I hate about it. Uh, very good performance. Nice screen. Good phone. All right, so that covers the uh, Android news of the day, I guess. All uh, right, so the question is, so my one question is, Bron says, have you seen Freedom Wars, which released in Japan earlier this month, and are you planning to get it when it releases in the States? Um, not really. I looked at it. It looks all right. Like, you know... Oh, uh, like that's like I don't know. Like it doesn't really interest me. And what games do you recommend for the Vita when I pass Persona 4 Golden? As I think I'm at least halfway done. As I recently said, Grise. Okay, if you get the good ending, which make sure you max out Marie's social link and follow a, a like a guide that doesn't have spoilers. Let's see. You have Grise's dungeon. So once you finish it, then you have the summer dungeon. The I'm just going to call it the Cloud Dungeon, so I don't spoil what it is. The the Darkness Dungeon. The the I'll call it the Winter Dungeon, and then the final one. So, oh, and the Military Base. So, all right, you take out Rese because I just reread. You said you had six dungeons to go. So you got you got a while. Make sure you max out Marie's social link and do all this other stuff to, uh, to get through the ending. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, as for Vita games, Guacamelee, Luminous, Sound Shapes. Definitely get Sound Shapes. Little Big Planet was pretty great. Uh, oh, Chrono Trigger. It's a PS1 classic. You should just, uh, definitely be playing Chrono Trigger. Yeah, and we should be done with that six, uh, that super mega awesome go playtime feature. Hello, Kami. Uh, 
of Okami sometime soon, right? Sometime this decade. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, how long is it? It's been going on for like what year and a half, two years now. <laughs> it's been a it's been a year, and <laughs> oh just so my you know, gosh. it's looking like we are gonna actually come in at lower than the average time to beat the game. Thank God. Uh, because it ta- the average time to beat the game is 35 hours, and we're at 32. And a hundred fucking million episodes in. <laughs> yep. We're gonna try to keep that series to shorter games from now yeah, on. Yeah, like, the, uh, like, we've been looking at games for the next time. Like, Penny Arcade, which is like 10 hours. Like, Batman, which is like 15. Catherine's like 12. Halo 2, which is like 6. So don't worry. That the the next time we're gonna do a game that long is when we're gonna end the series. Which we said this before when we're tired, when we don't want to do let's plays anymore, and have no intention to ever do them again. We are going to do Twilight Princess and Persona Four back to back. Done. Actually, you can you can coach me in Persona Four because it's an RPG. Actually, to be honest, Bronson, actually, you could play 60 Minute Access and I play this for my house and go play time. You can coach me on Persona 4 so I actually finish the game and see what the greatness is about. Like, Anthony, why aren't you fusing anything? God damn <laughs> I'm it. sorry, okay? That's like the thing about Mega 10 games that I just don't get. It's just like, oh my goodness, there's all this stuff that they, that, like, they even told me about this stuff and I still didn't do it. There were, there's something about the game's design that I just... And missing things, uh, but that's okay. You, but that's okay. You go see- into the creepy man's limo, <laughs> and, and he and he works his magic, and then monsters happen. It's not that hard. Uh, <laughs> it's not that hard, Bronson, to give Morrow a better bow. Come on. You know what? That was funny. I don't care what you said. I, like, I didn't. Was- I didn't even realize that until Joe pointed it out. And then I realized that we never gave... And then I remembered that we, that we never at one point did we actually give Morrow a better weapon. We, we never Because Morrow was our healer. Morrow yeah. was the healer, so we never had to think about it. And then Joe pointed it out, and I'm like, oh. Second worst bow in the game. <laughs> Second uh, worst. And I'm like, wow, okay. I don't know how that worked, but all right. Yeah, you should definitely play Chrono Trigger. That game is awesome. Uh, that's on Vita. Um... Let's see what else is on Vita. Guacamelee, Sound Shapes, Luminous, um, Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy X, definitely Final Fantasy X. Um, Rayman Legends is pretty great. Uh, the Walking Dead games and The Wolf Among Us are all really good. I actually just finished The Wolf Among Us. It's awesome. You should play that. Uh, by the way, some of you have wondered where has Spoiler Cast been? Well, it's hard to do that show when no new releases with spoilers come out. But episode four, of The Walking Dead. Oh, is I need happening. to play that. Yeah, episode four, of The Walking Dead is happening, and five will happen in a month or two. So we'll definitely do spoiler cast of that because Anthony and I both own the fucking game. So, and we Ooh. might, even, and we might do Wolf Among Us also if I can get, if I can, you know, figure out a way to get it on Anthony's computer. But, Wait, um, what's on my computer now? The oh, Wolf, Wolf Among, Among Us. Us. Yeah, like, yeah, oh what? man, that Wolf Among Us, man, I really should look into it. I should have bought it during Steam sales. Um, uh, it, it's like uh, one of those games that I'm like, you know what, The Walking Dead Season 1 last year was, or last year, two years ago? Two years ago, right? Uh, yeah, it came out 2012, first season. Yeah, like, that was like the surprise that no one saw coming, and I just feel like because Destiny and Next Gen and... All this stuff is happening. Just like season two just kind of got swept under the radar. Huge time. So I, I kind of feel like, like, man, I need to look into uh, The Walking Dead season two. Because, hey, you never know. That could like just creep up and suddenly, you know, be something great. I also like The Wolf Among Us because there's something about the fact that you have fairy tale characters just like living these really serious dark lives. Yeah. Dude. Uh, I'm, this isn't a spoiler, but just wait till you meet the character Bloody Mary. Yeah. Oh my Great. god. Great. Um, I need to get Wolf Among Us uh, first. And Walking Dead season two. Hey, we looked at episode. We looked at uh, episode one, but um, but never went further than that. And I freaking have it on my Steam account, so I really should look at it. it doesn't take much time. So 
you never know. Speaking of games that I really should look into, there's this one game that actually did came out that a lot of that some people were really talking about about how it's like old fashioned RPG and it's really good. It's called Divinity Original Sin, and it's like old fashioned stuff like uh, I think Baldur's Gate it has this overhead view perspective to it. So you know, something else for me to look into. Uh, it's getting quite a lot of a. It's surprisingly good, is what I heard. So something else to look for. Um. So, in addition to a lot of Wii U games that I need to buy. Alright. Um, Alright, well, I think that's about it. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, as always... Uh, oh, also, it is very, 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 very likely we're going to have a panel at SnafuCon in Reno in late October. You can buy tickets now, though! So you should! Because we want that panel room packed, just like Game Expo. I think we only had three open seats at Game Expo. Granted, small panel room, but still. Um, so yeah, totally come see John, Bremen, myself, Anthony, and possibly Tori. Uh, you know, do, do the panel thing. We, we're already cooking up some ideas. It's gonna be fun. Okay. Oh. Well, as always, we are on iTunes. Uh, please sure. YouTube. To- yeah, YouTube, please be sure to subscribe, rev- uh, leave comments, review to us on there. Obviously, leave comments on the website. Um, we always be sh- we're always sure to address comments and questions in the podcast, so please, please leave comments and questions. Um, this episode will be going live on Monday, so we will not have an episode coming this Friday, uh, but the following Friday we will be back on schedule. So the following Friday you can expect another episode of Scripted Access. And by then, hopefully, we have more news. Um, yeah. So everyone, yeah, we're giving an extra three or four days for the news lore to actually give us something. Yes. N- news low. <laughs> yeah. Right. Bye. So uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, enjoy the Destiny beta if you're in it. Um, and September 9th, the game comes out. I'm sure we're all looking forward to it. So uh, man, we need be- to have like. Uh, what was it like one of those things that we used to do back in the day just had a random night where it's just like hey guys we're playing a game community join us yeah we, we that'd be cool i had i was playing on like destiny, destiny is gonna be huge right? everyone's this. gonna have that game he's so, gonna enjoy this shout out but i was playing with check this out so i was playing with one of the original fans of the website this was before bronson anthony were even on the website one of my friends killer jd big shout out to him he's been he's a fan on of my the website. friends list yeah, yeah i remember we played with him in the uncharted beta yeah he's been a fan for a long time um and then it was funny because one of the like not original original but one of the original staff members of the gamer access like randomly just joined my party and keep in mind i haven't talked to this guy in like three four years like literally three to four years i hadn't talked let me put it this way i've always been living out in la for two years now and i hadn't talked to him at least a year before i moved out so he had like no clue about like me living out in la like how where the site was so he hopped in there we were chatting it was really cool and found out he's actually going into the army soon um so that was pretty cool and then while we were playing a fan of website killer instinct uh killer instinct popped in and we were playing destiny um on the crucible so big shout out to killer instinct as well um so yeah uh we'll do, I'm, we have to set up game nights for destiny we just have to once that game comes out so uh, the weird thing that bronson pointed out that i found a little bit indeed a bit odd it's just like one two three cooperative players and i'm like why three usually four is what we're all used to right or two or six two or four it's, it's three to six players depending on the strike uh yeah it's just like oh three and six those are kind of always because we're used to like two four or eight or 16 and you know it doubles from there like we're kind of used to those kinds of numbers binary numbers <laughs> 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, yeah. 256. Yeah. 5, 12. 10, 24. <laughs> yeah, when you're a computer fuck, scientist, you... you mag you, mag freaking, level, there's freaking like hundreds and hundreds of people. What, 256 versus 256? I remember when I first heard that, I'm like, is that even possible on a PlayStation 3? But then, of course, you know, the argument was like, oh, well, cell processors are so magical, it can obviously do... Well, yeah, but even then, it's like, it's not... 
it's it's more like the server being able to handle it because it's not 256 players on the screen at once because the maps were so freaking big. I mean, I the maps like, were so like maps... big. It was like, yes, technically it's 256 versus 256, but in reality it's just like you're playing a normal like 12 versus 12 map. <laughs> yeah, it's like I thought there were like 256 people in an area the size of a park. And Which that it's would just... be too insane anyways. You'd walk in two seconds, you'd be blown up. Which yeah. if I want that experience, I'll actually, play Call you know, of Duty. You know what? I actually, I, like, that was one of the things I was really excited about. It's just, like, I kind of like chaos in my shooters, which is kind of like what Star Wars Battlefront 2 was like, was that if you had the PC version, you can put 32 people on each side. And if you have your map be just a little bit cramped enough, you could just have, like, grenades just blowing up, and, and then you can pick a Jedi and then just, like, wipe out 10 people in a single strike. It's, like, for me, it's, like, 200 people in an area the size of a small city park is like just ridiculous chaos but then again so much stuff will be going off that the frame rate would hit like two frames a second if you're lucky then the server crashes <laughs> you know something really dumb anyway yeah all right, that's, all right. Well, that's it thank you guys for listening we will be back in a week and a half a little bit yeah a week and a half um, so thank you guys for listening. Please leave comments or questions. We are out. We love you. Bye. Bye.